Hello, hello. We're going to get kicked off in a couple minutes here. How's how's my audio? Can everybody hear me all right? Can I get a thumbs up or a little a little plus one or something like that? Beautiful. Thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. Mackenzie, Marin, great to great to see you all in here. Where where about you guys uh, calling in from today? Oh, yeah, of course. Up at the Epic Roofing office, for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Brunswick, that's fantastic. Bill, it's great uh, great to see you in here, my, my friend. It's uh, We're going to be dig digging a little deeper on uh, some more of these glorious automations, integrations. We're going to go a notch deeper on it. So looking forward to chatting, man. That is great. And... And Bill, remind me, whereabouts are you based? I know that you're, I believe that you're kind of up in the, up in the Northeast or something. Is that right? Houston. Right, right. Of course. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's good, man. This is, this is the sort of session we could probably uh, just add you as a, as a co-collaborator and you could, uh, you could share some of the cool things that you're building in your business. It's uh, really exciting to see it start coming together. Coming into our CRM via the API, music to my ears. Well, we're, um, I'm, I'm not sure whether we'll get as deep today as what it would take to build that, but that is, uh, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. So we've, uh, what, what we're going to be digging into today, um, and I mean, why not kick off? Why not get started? I mean, it's, it's 1.45 here after all. We're going to be talking about automating your workflow. And, um, there's, there's a few things that we'll kind of, you know, dig in on, go deeper on, but I've got a lot that I want to cover. So we're just going to jump into things here. So um, first and foremost, um, if you guys haven't met me, uh, my name's Brandon. I lead the sales and marketing and the revenue operations here at Sumo Quote. It's my pleasure to be working with just some, some amazing people here in Calgary. Um, if if uh, you've all been attending different sessions today, you will have met several team members that we get to work with. And we get to work with some amazing people. So um, on, on our side of things, my revenue operations team right now, very small, but we manage the tech uh, integrations and automations that is running our sales, uh, marketing, customer success, support, um, and a lot of our revenue tracking systems here at Sumo Quote. And so when we're talking about operations, um, we're really talking about automations, integrations, and being able to uh, start getting, just start, start being able to get uh, a business that runs itself. Um, I was in the contracting space. I was in the, I ran painting companies for several years, worked on the coaching side. For those of you who have attended some of the BTA sessions with uh, Benji, the Breakthrough Academy team has about 15 college row alumni of which I am one. And, uh, and if any of you guys want to pick my brain about fly fishing and hunting, today is first day of hunting season. It's painful to be, uh, you know, in an office today, but you know what, I'm, I'm pumped to be talking about important stuff. So. Let's talk about a few of the things that we're gonna cover here. So first, we're gonna talk about a little bit of the basics of how do you start thinking like a tech company, okay? Um, you know, there's, uh, I'm gonna push you guys around a little bit on some of the integrations and automations that, uh, you know, that tech companies think about. Um, and one of the things that I'm, I'm not gonna do is I'll actually kind of cover a few things that, um, that we're going to skip over in this session, but we're going to go a little bit deeper here. Um, for those of you who have attended a few sessions, um, I've done kind of an intro session. I've done, uh, you know, choosing your tech stack as a notch deeper. We're going to go one level deeper than that, which is how do we actually start implementing this? Okay. But we're going to start, uh, start with how to think like a tech company. We're going to talk about how to spot opportunities, uh, for automating tasks and then how to identify, can you automate this? Um, or you just can't. Um, and lastly, we're going to talk about some examples. Okay, so we got a lot to cover. So uh, let's get going. So first, I'm going to touch on what we are not going to talk about, which is one, we are not going to talk about what are integrations and automations. Um, I did a talk on this one already. Um, Jill, if you don't mind dropping that in the in the chat here. Um, that That's a previous session in terms of the basics of what are integrations? How do technology companies connect uh, their tools together? 
Um, and then secondly, what te tech stack should I use? I'm also not going to cover that right now. We are going to uh, have that second one also dropped in the chat right now, which is if you're trying to figure out what tech do I use? What phase of business am I in? Should I implement new technology? Should I stick with what I've got? How should I frame this? That's actually a separate uh, separate talk that I did previously. We're not gonna cover that too. So Jill, if you don't mind dropping that uh, link in the chat as well, uh, we're gonna keep uh, cruising through, okay? So first question I've got for you is what tech are you using? Okay, throw it in the chat. What tools are you currently using? Um, tell me a little bit about, uh, tell me a little bit about what sort of tools you guys are currently using. What CRM are you using, measurement tools, stuff like that. Just drop it on in. We got an Aculinx. Jim, I saw you posting in the first, uh, first comment. That's awesome. Roofsnap, Jobnambus, Zoho, Eagle View, Company Cam, QuickBooks Enterprise. That's awesome. Great to see Leap in there. Uh, you know, I love the integration we've got with them. Rooflink, love that. QuickBooks Online, perfect. So, so the obvious question is, why are you guys using these tools? Um, and, and, and the reason why is because technology really helps us be able to simplify, streamline, and, and really automate tasks, okay? So its reason of being is it automates tasks, enhances communication, and really it increases the velocity of information. And so if, if, we, if we were to say, one, how is the tech companies think? Um, I think a lot of it would be quite familiar to the same reasons that you guys have chosen uh, the tech tools that you have, which is, one, tech companies ask one question. How do I create a machine that produces value and makes money? Okay, so that's the whole thing. You create code that automates tasks, you know, streamlines processes, uh, you know, is able to is able to simplify things so that really you can just walk away from that thing and it's now a money making machine, right? And so when you're talking about Job Nimbus, Company Cam, those are tools that fix problems and they really are trying to be able to, uh, you know, in many ways, run a piece of your business for you. So one, one author that I've been reading recently, and he's a big uh, current influencer in the technology space, uh, is a guy named Dan Martell. So Dan Martell has a principle which he says, million dollar companies are not built on $10 tasks. So what he wants you to start thinking about is how do you delegate? How do you automate tasks? How do you actually, you know, and this is kind of the thesis of his book, how do you buy back your time as an entrepreneur and a CEO? And what I would say, I mean, this is, this is a great comment. I love Dan, you know, and it's a bit of a call for all of us as business owners, leaders, entrepreneurs to be able to start recognizing that there's some $10 tasks that you just shouldn't be doing. What I would say in the reality for the majority of roofing companies is millions of dollars of work can be broken into $10 tasks, however. Okay. So then I'm going to pose this question back to you, which is how can I think like a tech, uh, a tech company? And the answer is one $10 task at a time. Okay. So we're going to start talking a little bit about how is it that, you know, how is it we start thinking about these little tasks? Of course, if I back up for roofing companies, how do you start thinking about uh, those, those $10 tasks at a time that lead to millions, millions of dollars of revenue? I want you to think about it a little practically, okay? Think about, you know, ripping off shingles off of a house. You know, taking one shingle off might not be a $10 task, but maybe ripping off a bundle is. Installing a, a shingle, maybe a $10 task. When you think about making a call, picking up the phone, returning a, you know, a timely response to some, uh, to some homeowners, that, that might be a $10 task. And so how is it then that we spot those opportunities to automate? Because there's some tasks that you can automate, there's some that you can't, but my challenge to you is going to be, let's start thinking about what are those tasks that you can automate so that you can really, uh, yeah, so you can really just start producing a lot more efficiency in your business and start thinking like a tech company, right? Okay. So first I got to tell you a little bit of a story, which is <laughs> this last weekend, I went to one of these zero waste stores. And if you don't know what these things are, they look like this. <laughs> and 
Has anybody ever been to one of these stores? Um, has, it, has anybody ever been to one of these stores? So I, I realize, and th these are a little trendy. I was in there with my wife. We were buying soap. Okay. And so, you know, it's a zero waste store. So there's no packaging. This is great. So I don't know. We went in there with our brown paper bag that we fill with soap or something like that. And you put in your soap and then you weigh it and you leave. You know, they charge you just for the thing. But one of the things when I arrived at this store is I looked at the walls and I was like, man, I don't even know where to start. Like, yes, of course, zero waste. Yes, just showing up with my jars and having things refilled is a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a, you know, uh, I don't know what you'd say, like a little bit more of a futuristic, little little more healthy way to be thinking about the world. However, I, I just didn't even know what I would buy there. So for me, when I went to a store like this, and maybe, you know, some of you will go to a store like this and you'll walk in, you'll be like, eh, I don't even know where to start. And maybe I'm dumb. Maybe I'm just a, you know, a prairie boy from Canada or something like that. But I literally had no idea to where to start. So I asked them, I said, hey, like, what do I even buy here? And they, they said, oh, just, uh, you know, you can go look at the shelves. And so for me, like, and of course I asked, like, is there a catalog? They're a zero waste store. So no, they haven't printed a catalog. So I have no idea. So they just told me, look at the shelves. <laughs> go look at the shelves and see what's possible. And when it came to me wandering in there and being like, I don't even know what problem you guys solve in my life. Yes, you're a progressive store. But if you don't even know how to name the problem that a business solves, how do you even know if you're, you need to fix it, right? So I left there and I was like, I don't know, there's only so much barley and flour that I need in my life. So I just left and I'll probably never go back. But it reminded me of this one quote when it comes to starting to identify problems and challenges in business, which uh, came from uh, Chris Kettering, who's the GM, previ previous uh, innovations head for General Motors way back. And he said this, he said, a problem well-defined is a problem half solved. And so what, what we're going to dig into a little bit with some of these $10 tasks and some of these uh, ways to start automating work is we're gonna say, let's start seeing where there's problems in your business that we can automate so that then you can actually start being like, huh, can we hand this off? Huh, can we, can we create an opportunity to automate this, okay? So here are some key ways to spot some automation opportunities. And again, think about those $10 tasks, okay? So these are the things that automation works really well. This is not an exhaustive list, but this is the list that I came up with here this last week when I was putting my thoughts together. One, automation works really great for re repetitive tasks, okay? Um, repetitive tasks like a new, a new lead comes in. So what happens, okay? You guys get a lot of leads in your businesses. So new lead comes in, what happens? Does somebody enter it into your CRM? Does that CRM need to have it in, you know, your QuickBooks Online tool, your company cam, your roof link, your roof snap? You know, I, I saw several of these tools. Cool seeing a sales message and Asana in there. Those are some, those are some really, really powerful tools in their bill. So repetitive tasks, that's those are really, really good $10 tasks to be able to say, can we automate that? Okay. The next one, scheduled items. Okay. So the job's going to be starting soon. What happens? Okay, do you have to notify your crew? Do you have to notify the homeowner? Do you have to order materials? Scheduled items are a very, very powerful opportunity to automate. The next one, data entry. You know, tax season's coming. You know, what has to be entered in? This is, this is one of my favorite things to, uh, you know, look at automations. I hate tax season. Uh, since getting married, I have just... Uh, gratefully uh, married a much smarter person than myself and my wife just takes care of our taxes. And so she even has, and I realize we're kind of nerdy people in the tech space. She even has different automations that just pass receipts directly off to our accountant. And some of them even just pass it directly into QuickBooks Online. It's kind of cool. Um, but when you're thinking about that data entry, it has to be right. And so accurate data is kind of the next one that comes to mind for me. You know, say customer's information changed. How do you update every system? How many of you, when you're looking at the name and address and email address in your CRM, have 100% confidence that it's correct in sumo quote, 
that it's correct in company cam, that it's connect, co correct in you know, your measurement tools? The answer is very few. So being able to think about that, um, that tightness of data um, is really important. That's an excellent opportunity for some automation. Somebody's getting things wrong regularly. So say communication typos, you know, have you guys, has anybody ever ripped off the wrong roof because they texted their crew the wrong address? This is a really, really uh, common thing. When I, when I was running a painting company, I remember, thankfully, we're not ripping off roofs, but finding my, my painters power washing the neighbor's houses constantly. And they're using rotabits, they're stripping all their paint off. It's a disaster, it sucks. But that, that was something that was very, very common that as soon as the iPhone came around and I could copy, paste addresses in, man, that was better. So, you know, we see people with Sumo Quote where they have the customer's home added to the cover. And that also makes it just a point of clarity or it makes it so that things are just more accurate. Number six, if it has to be done right or you're working late, this is another perfect opportunity for, for uh, automation. This is a little bit harder. So we're talking payroll, talking expenses, ordering, pricing projects, sending out quotes. And really the question that automation asks for this is, do you have a system for this? Because this isn't one small $10 task, but it is certainly uh, something that you actually need to be systemic in your approach so that you can automate that task. Okay, but I'm trying to jog your ideas of like, what are some examples of some of these, uh, some of these tasks? And really this is, this is where automation just crushes it, okay? Um, that's that that's hilarious, uh, hilarious, Mitch. That uh, but yeah, I mean the the wrong house address. I, I see that constantly. But th this is these are the sort of problems where little bits of automation can absolutely make your life better. You're gonna keep moving. So again, we're gonna we're gonna look at this. A problem well defined is a pro uh, is a problem half solved. So my question to you is, what's your ten dollar problem? Okay, what what what's your ten dollar problem that you're like? Ah, I keep doing this and it sucks. And I have to, I have to figure out a way somehow to make it when a lead comes in that, you know, that Greg in the office just makes the call, you know, or when a lead comes in, I just want to text them, let them know that we're coming. Or when a lead comes in, I want to send them our staff's calendar for booking a sales appointment. Those are perfect $10 problems that you can automate and start experiencing huge value. Okay, so feel free to throw throw in any sort of ten dollar problems that come to mind uh, in the chat box as as we keep going here, because the next question we're going to ask is, can you automate it or not? Okay, so I think everybody you know really re really wrestles you know with this idea of ah I can't I can't delegate or I can't hand it off, and, and the truth is that there are certain things that um, that you can automate and that you can't automate. Okay. And so let's let's talk about that. We've already talked about what you can automate, you know, a little bit here, okay? Repetitive tasks, schedules, data entry, stuff like that, okay? What's more interesting right now is let's skip over and talk about what you can't automate, okay? So first, there's a bunch of things that are challenging uh, to be able to, uh, to really uh, automate or hand off to your teams. Phone calls, okay? Hard to automate a phone call. Two, Really hard to uh, automate installation of roofs. I don't think anybody's getting freaked out about robots going and installing roofs on people's houses yet. Um, three, in-home meetings. You know, we see we see a lot of these in-home meetings uh, being something that people are like, ah, there's nothing like selling in person. Your close rates are way better. Your business is way better. You're just, you know, you, you can't replicate that virtually, okay? Customer experience. There's a lot of pieces of customer experience that people believe you just can't automate. And it's true to an extent. Um, and the last one that I'm going to touch on here is net new. Okay. What you can't automate is what, and, and if you guys are, you know, watching the news and you're following different, you know, LinkedIn stuff and stuff in YouTube, everyone's freaking out about AI. The, the unique thing about AI is it produces what's called net new. So it actually creates things. So it actually, it doesn't take information, pass it there. It doesn't take information, do a, uh, you know, a certain process on it. It actually takes a body of knowledge. And out of that, from a request, you can actually create something new. So currently, um, you, can't really, uh, you can't really automate that. 
We're going to talk about that a little bit. I'll touch on AI because um, that that is certainly a piece of things that I think is very fascinating, and uh, we'll keep rolling. But when we talk about like, there's a couple things here that we do that we live in uh, in Sumo Quote regularly, which is in-home meetings and customer experience. Okay, and this is what we're trying to do at Sumo Quote. Okay. We are trying to automate the kitchen table experience. Okay, so I mean, this isn't this isn't entirely our uh, our entire like reason of being, but this is really kind of what's inspiring some of the next direction of what we're innovating on and some of the things that we're trying to develop. Okay, so how are we trying to automate the kitchen table experience? Think about it. You know, think about what it is that we do. We're quoting software. We're a piece of tech. So we already have customer data that's flowing in. Where do you have measurements that's flowing in? I mean, think about that. Like previously, customer data, pen and paper. Now people have got CRMs, job names. Makes sense, right? Um, measurements. You know, when we're talking about measurements, who would have thought that Eagle View would have started flying a massive fleet of planes over the entire Western world and measuring everything? And, and, and now you see all of these other measurement companies, you know, using satellite photography and stuff like that. Holy crap, you don't even have to climb on the roof and measure it anymore. That's amazing. Photos. I mean, you, you know, you talk about Google Street View, you talk about Hover, you talk about some of the ways that we can actually start connecting that in. Customized pricing with Sumo Quote, you can pull in those, those measurements. Uh, if you were in Sean, uh, our director of CS's previous chat on price list, he went deep on how it is that you convert measurements into boom, automatic, accurate pricing. Customize upgrades, same thing. It's very, it's amazing to think that you can actually start automating that, that additional upgrade piece, e-signing. Pretty basic now, but man, it certainly wasn't 10 years ago. Creating orders. With Sumo Quote, you can create an order in a single click. That's crazy. If you think about actually showing up at the store previously and starting to, starting to actually make that process super slick. Now, updating revenue numbers. When we're talking about the way that you take sold data and start passing it back to other systems. I mean, we've got a robust API, robust Zapier. You can pass it to any system that you want. Um, so now you're really talking about what are all of those little tasks that have to happen to really automate that kitchen table experience? We're getting there, okay? And and you know keep keep your you know keep your eyes peeled for some of the things that are coming. End of the session here. We've got some great announcements of some cool new additional steps that we're taking towards automating that kitchen table experience okay previously if one of these was missing man could we really automate that in-person experience maybe not right so there's a lot of small pieces that make up the whole here okay of course notifying teams on sold lost i'm going to actually give you guys that one that's just a free takeaway here today so stay tuned um so next let's let's just touch on where does ai fit how many of you guys have been hearing um, AI? You know, like one funny thing that we've been hearing in our sales calls is we've had a couple customers be like, I don't need Sumo quote. I'm just going to ask AI to make my quotes for me. And it's going to produce them beautifully, magically from measurements and magically pull the customer's data out of their CRM. And boom, Sumo quote is going to be in trouble, right? So we're, we're starting to hear that. I'm not sure if you guys are starting to hear some of the hype around how AI is really gonna be fitting in. But there's a couple of interesting comments that have been made around artificial intelligence and how it can you know, potentially automate everything. So there's a great quote from a writer named James Barrett. Um, he wrote a book called Our Final Invention. It was about 10 years ago, which is wild. And he made a comment that artificial intelligence will be the last invention of man. That everything from here on out will be an augmented improvement. Or that any of these innovations will actually be created by us prompting AI. So really, then the question is, so where does AI fit, right? And really, if we were to say what is possible, and what is not possible to automate in a business. AI is starting to squeeze the edges of possible and not possible, and it's starting to blur those lines. When we say you can't automate it, AI is starting to say, yeah, maybe, which is kind of cool. Second, it's our first gl glimpse of net new or creation from not us. This is where people start getting a little freaked out. 
They should. It's interesting. But when you're talking about something that's actually creating something new, AI is the first thing that has ever really been able to create brand new things aside from us. So this is you know where this where this comment comes from, right? It creates in bounds. One thing, if it's a you know if it's a language model, like a generative language model, it can create language. Um, so if you're worried about a AI system going and installing roofs, don't worry, you're not going to lose your lose your shirt on that one just yet. Um, but it is as smart as its input. So, you know, that's where people hear about it's ingesting big data models and it's producing things out. But this is the one thing that I would say um, is really important to remember when it comes to how does AI fit into this automation conversation? And we're gonna look at some AI next to talk about how you can leverage artificial intelligence now in your business. Um, but first, it is not a silver bullet that can fix all your woes with a word, okay? So don't worry, it's not, it's not going to take over the world. It's also not going to just, you know, make all of your problems go away. Not yet. I'll, I'll leave it a little bit cynical for right now anyway. Okay. So then the question is, of course, so what can you automate? Let's talk about what is possible. And the answer is lots. Okay. So let's dig in. So I'm going to just do a little bit of extra screen sharing here. Um, and if you guys could do me a favor, I'm going to just stop sharing and then reshare my screen to just go a little bit bigger. Please let me know when this comes back through a little bit bigger. Everyone see this okay? We got a yerp, a yes, a ASDF or some sort of signs of life. Thanks guys, I really appreciate that. So let's, let's talk first about something simple, okay? We're gonna talk about some $10 tasks, okay? And I, I, I'm gonna show this one because I think everybody should have an automation like this. So, Jill on my team, who is just in the uh, in the chat, is actually going to just share a template for this in Zapier for free, so you can just have this. But this is this is a type of automation that, if we were to say, when a job is signed, in Sumo quote, I want my whole team to know about it. So this is an automation that does just that. So here in Zapier, Zapier's a great tool. It's like my favorite thing ever. Um, it you know it's like 20, 30 bucks a month, and you can start making sumo quote making your other apps do things that they actually don't have built in so here if i was to think about a ten dollar task it's when my quote is signed in sumo, sumo quote i want my team to know about it i want my sales team to know about it we use this internally so that when a new customer signs up for a subscription we post it to a slack channel which is just a team messaging channel and if you take a peek at this here i'm just going to expand this action so you can all see what it is this just automatically takes sold job data from Sumo Quote and says, this is the customer that we sold. New sold job from Jane and Joe homeowner. And it puts in the customer's email address and even puts in the total project signed amount, okay? So now if you set up this little bit of an automation, you can take job signed, boom, tell everyone which is awesome. So again, you've got that template sitting in there. Feel free to, free to click onto this. If you're already using Slack, great. You'll notice that I actually also added WhatsApp right here, okay? So if people are preferring to use WhatsApp, great. This is a notification setup so that here, when it's the case that there's a new sold job, I can just pop through. Here, I'll click retest step on this. We'll see how well my uh, do not disturb works on my phone right now. But really, what this is gonna do is now that there's been a sold job, boom, you'll see I get a notification on WhatsApp that my job was just sold. Great way to support sales teams, great way to encourage people that your work is making a difference. It's awesome. So there's one more step that I added in the middle here, which is every time you get a job signed in Sumo quote, let your team know in Slack, then create that customer in QuickBooks Online so that their data is perfect. So the customer's name is exactly correct. So the customer's address, phone number, email, and everything like that is exactly correct. You'll see when I pop in here, I'm mapping the contact information based on the sold contact information. And then if it's the case that you take this WhatsApp notification and notify your accountant, it's also a perfect time to tell your accountant, hey, now is the time to go into Sumo Quote and push this sold data into QuickBooks Online, okay? So 
we can think of these little tasks that we're removing. Boom, quote was sold. Great. Tell your sales team. Pump up the team. Let people know. Awesome. Three, add it into your QuickBooks Online uh, account so that it's perfect, so the data is good. And then immediately notify you know, somebody on WhatsApp, notify your accountant saying, hey, there's new sold data for you to start actually passing directly into, into QuickBooks Online to start actually speeding up that revenue process. Does that sound cool? Is this helpful for everybody? We've got, we've got a couple more things to show. Awesome. If I, if I get any, if, if I get any questions, feel free. This is, this is great. This is great. Getting the thumbs up everyone. Thank you so much. Here's the next one I want to show you. And this is a more complex task, which is when a job sold, Hey, I would really love to find the salesperson who sold it, send the customer an email saying, thank you. However, that customer integrate or that customer interaction is very sensitive, right? So you guys want to make sure you're like, ah, it's got to be a personalized email. Oh man, it's really got to be something good. This is something where AI and specifically ChatGPT is starting to squeeze the bounds of what's possible. Okay. So we get a quote signed from Sumo quote. We're going to find some info on the salesperson who sold it. And then why don't we ask AI to actually write us an email that sounds totally custom tailored with an email prompt. Okay. So here we can actually take an email prompt that says, thank our customer pushing in their name from Sumo quote sold job for trusting us with their business. Make a light joke about Orlando and the weather there today. If you're a multi-city uh, location, this is a great thing. Make a joke about it and let the customer know that we're going to follow up a couple weeks before we start their project. Their project costs this much money. The salesperson they met with was this name. And please send the email from them. Okay? So I'm literally just telling AI what it is that they need to generate. So now, every time there's a sold job, this is going to create a new, unique email address that based on the weather that day, it's going to create a bit of a different joke, just something a little bit lighthearted. We'll see what it is that this produces. And this is going to actually start personalizing what is typically an unautomatable process. So let's go down, let's see what it produces, okay? So let's come down here. We're going to retest this step. And let's see what it is. So here I'm going to hit test. Boom. Hey, Jane and John, I hope this email finds you well. I wanted to take a moment to thank you for choosing Sumo Exteriors for your coming project. We truly appreciate your trust in us. By the way, have you heard about the weather in Orlando today? It's so hot, even the palm trees are sweating. In terms of the project, we'll be in touch a couple weeks before we start to finalize the details and make sure everything's set. Total cost for your project is $11,983.40. If you have any questions or need any further assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out. Best regards, Brandon Healy, sales rep with Sumo Exteriors. Boom. Okay, so now I just click continue and I connect this to Gmail and I say, great. Now, the body of this email, I am actually just going to pass straight through into Gmail. And there's our email, totally customized to this customer using data specifically from the sold job to start actually automating a bit of a process that people don't believe you can. Okay. So again, check the check the link in the in the chat. It's a template for this. And I'm just gonna show you one more that I actually couldn't uh, on here. And it's the same one, I'm not gonna go too much deeper, but this is what you do if you've got multiple salespeople. So what we do is we say, which salesperson was it that actually sold this? And we can actually connect multiple accounts. So here we've got a bit of logic saying, which is the salesperson? This one is from Brandon Healy. This one over here is from John Mills. So that depending on which uh, estimator it was that actually sold that information, it will use AI to automatically write a customized, uh, really slick looking email with a nice follow up. If you guys want, you can add a delay in here to slow it down. Sometimes, I mean, if it's like sold, boom, instant email, I mean, it's going to freak some people out. So maybe, maybe I should add like a little 45 minute delay in terms of the sending or whatnot. But then... This here is gonna say, great. 
if the salesperson is, uh, say, you know, in this case, John or Brandon, I'll just edit this sucker so we can take a look deeper. If the estimator is John Mills, great. I will connect John's email to send it. If it's the case that the, you'll see over on the far right hand side, if the estimator is not Brandon, if it's not John, well, maybe in this case, I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see better. We're going to send it from the company account. Okay. So then we're just going to send it from hello at sumoquote.com. So now we're actually starting to figure out what are some of the ways that we can start leveraging AI to really be able to start personalizing things using on the spot prompts to, to really automate things that have never been automated before. So um, with that said, how are we doing? I'm going to jump in here. Last question for you guys. What's your first $10 problem? I mean, if it's the case that you can identify it, there are some really creative ways to solve it. In the same way that I have a hard way in those, in those stores of looking on the walls and being like, I don't even know what to buy here. I don't need any more oats. Here, it's trying to give you guys a few ideas of this is how you can actually start thinking of these problems a little bit more accessibly. Cool? Any questions? How's everyone doing? Helpful? I'm, I'm, I'm here if anyone's got anything else that, uh, that, I can, that I can add. Cool. We got lots of good stuffs. Lots of thumbs up. Great. Beautiful. Oh, Matt, great to see you, man. It's always great to see your face in here. Awesome. Looks like the last final closing remarks are wrapping up. There's giveaways, there's some stuff like that. Let's jump back over into the main, uh, main stage and keep going. Thank you all so much for your time. We're gonna be sending this out as a recording afterwards. Yeah, so don't worry, you'll still get that. Please hop over to the live stage and we'll continue the day. Thanks all for